I'm gonna actually install this today. So I'll explain that. It's some boating, it's a trim indicator and a clinometer. I did get a chance to use the Levo gauges a little bit that I installed here. You guys saw the install. I will talk you through why I really like these and actually what they might be useful for. So this one right here, I've got trim tabs on the boat. So I want to be able to either trim the boat if I've got some sort of a problem or if there's a lot of weight on one side or the other of the vehicle, which is the boat, I want to be able to trim that to center from left to right, okay? If there's, for some reason, I need to trim the boat left, right, then I can do that, all right? If there's uh, displacement, or even if I'm trying to go, you know, countering some waves, I have to go from point A to point B, and I have to cross a bay, and there's some waves coming at a diagonal, I can't head straight into them like I want to, then I can always trim into the waves as well a little bit. As far as getting the best gas mileage, getting the best performance, getting, I wanna try and keep the boat level, right? So then I'm gonna try and get the motor to where it's most efficient, the, especially if I'm trying to get either fuel efficiency or speed efficiency. So that's this, this is like front to back up and you know, whether the boat is really high, you'll see when the boat goes into a plane, it'll go all the way up to whatever, you know, all the way up to 30 is what this gauge goes to. And that's why it goes so high because the, it can possibly get into a 30. This I could, you know, if I'm really hot dogging, uh, I could get the, you know, side to side maxed out on, you know, a, a turn or something like that. But it's also not good because my motor could even come out of the water on a real, you know, a 15, 20, 30 degree turn. I might have to, you know, or even higher than that. It might not be a good idea depending on what I'm doing. So really just nice to have and super easy, super convenient to install and I'm gonna be uh, using them with the trim tabs and now I don't have any guesswork involved with the trim tabs and it will just help me you know, fine tune things a little bit. I'm one of those guys that likes a backup. Also, I'm one of those guys that likes a compass, a digital uh, compass, of course. We've got the Jeep Garmin GPS here, which is pretty easy to use. I've, the cell phone apps have come a long way, so nowadays you, know, I got, you can download uh, maps and charts and all kinds of even crazy amount of awesome stuff on your cell phone a lot of them you have to pay for uh, which is you know not the same with uh, driving on a road with boat boats and navigational charts a lot of apps you still pretty much everything you still have to pay for at some point unless you just buy the Garmin unit so on the, on the cell phones the good stuff you have to pay for you know you got the backup compass here really good backup compass uh, you have compass on your phone so at this point I've got the, the iPhone I've got the the Garmin GPS map I've got the Richie backup compass, you know, a lot of different ways to navigate if I had to. And then I often carry charts. If the difference between a chart and a map, for those of you that don't know, a chart is just uh, for plotting on the water, waterways, and then a map is for, you know, plotting on land. The difference, same difference between a line and a rope. When you're on a, a, a boat, a, a rope becomes a line. So, you know, it's when I say chart, I just mean navigation chart, I just mean a map. So. Uh, that's the thing I you know they are often waterproof as well sometimes a map isn't waterproof but you definitely want to have a waterproof navigation chart as a backup if you can and especially if you're going to be going long distances unfamiliar waters here where I'm at right now this waterway you don't have a I don't have to worry about a lot of people coming back here because not many people know these waters and you have to go through slow the first time you go through and see where the shallow parts are see what the boat can actually get to know the draft on your boat. The draft on this sea hunt's about 1.7 feet. So, uh, and I'm in sitting in 1.8 feet of water right now. So uh, just definitely have to know what you're doing and that's kind of why there's nobody around me and that's why I can make cool videos out here with this beautiful backdrop. Thanks for watching, bone out.